I'm Natasha Hausdorff, a barrister and a director of UK Lawyers for Israel. The court can only exercise jurisdiction that is delegated to it by a state party or with a reference from the UN Security Council. The absence of such jurisdiction ought to be clear in this case, but the prosecutor at the ICC has sought to circumvent the basic requirements of jurisdiction, and this has prompted an unprecedented international response, submissions from seven states' parties, and from many experts in international law explaining the legal situation. What has not been addressed by the prosecutor in submissions on jurisdiction is the fundamental basis of Israel's sovereignty and jurisdiction in the territory the prosecutor is concerned with. The approach proposed to pre-trial chamber one is desperately concerning for a number of reasons which turn international law on its head, not least because the prosecutor's analysis subordinates the fundamental principle of customary international law Orti possidetis juris, to non-legal criteria put forward by the prosecutor attempting to reason the existence of a Palestinian state. It is that fundamental principle of international law which determined the status of the territory at the independence of the State of Israel. At the most basic level, this entirely precludes the court from having jurisdiction where Israel is not a state party to the ICC. This really is an instance of politics trumping law at one of the foremost international judicial institutions, of fundamental principles of international law being turned on their head. We're witnessing the weaponization of international judicial bodies. It is something which ought to concern all human rights protecting democracies around the world, because the double standards which start against Israel are unlikely to end with Israel. We must all be alive to the threat that this poses to the international rule of law.